Let's get some excitement in the room. Actually, get these questions flowing. Freak, that was a good game. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Zuckman Law Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah. And y'all, yesterday, the Atlanta Falcons acquired Matt Judon from the New England Patriots for a 2025 third-round pick. And I absolutely love this trade, y'all, because Matt Judon is still one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. And the Atlanta Falcons desperately need the help at the edge rush position. Y'all, you look at Matt Judon, and I know a lot of people are going to say, Jose, he's 32, he's coming off a torn bicep injury. But y'all, before that injury, he had four sacks in four games. He had nine quarterback hits, and he had five tackles for loss. So to me, that doesn't sound like a guy that's on the decline, y'all. That sounds like a guy that's still one of the best players in his position. And when you look at his career accolades, y'all, I mean, he's a four-time Pro Bowler. He has 66 and a half career sacks. He had 28 sacks from 2021 to 2022. And he has a seventh high, highest pressure rate uh, since 2021 with a 15.7 pressure rate. And y'all, you look at the Atlanta Falcons since 2021, they have the worst pressure rate of any team with only a 27.6% pressure rate. And so this is kind of a match made in heaven. Uh, you look at the Atlanta Falcons, y'all, they have not had a double-digit sack guy since Vic Beasley did it way back in 2016 when he had 15 and a half sacks. Y'all, it's been a long time ago. And that's why I really could not take the Atlanta Falcons as a serious playoff contender because although I like what they have offensively with Kirk Cousins at quarterback, B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier in the backfield, then you got Drake London, Darna Mooney, and Kyle Pitts at your skill positions. And I like some of the players they have defensively great. Gordy Jarrett, David Onyemata, Jesse Bates, A.J. Terrell, y'all, DeMarco Hellams. But I always went back to that edge rusher spot for the Falcons. I'm like, I just don't like that position at all. They do not have a guy that can just change the game, y'all. Now they have it in Matt Judon. Again, I know he's 32, but this dude can still change a game for an NFL team. You're going to see it this season, y'all. Now that the Atlanta Falcons have a proven veteran pass rusher that's one of the best in the league, it's going to make life so much easier for them. Because there's going to come times in games, y'all, where you're up by, you know, three points. You're up by seven points with a two or three minutes left in the ball game. And you need your defense to close the game out for you. And if you don't have that game change and that dominant edge rusher that can do that, the other team is more than likely going to beat you. But now, y'all, when the Atlanta Falcons find themselves in those positions where they're up by three, they're up by seven, with two or three minutes left in the ball game, they should be able to win those games because they have a guy, Matt Judon, that can close games for them, y'all. So to me, this is an amazing move out there, GM Terry Finnott. And I'm glad that he realized, hey, we need to get better on this D-line. We need to get better at this edge rusher spot. Yes, again, they have Grady Jarrett. They have David Onyemata. That's cool, y'all. But you have to be able to generate pressure from the edge, y'all. Not only can Matthew Judon generate pressure from the edge, he also can set the edge very well, y'all. He's a very good run defender. So I expect Matthew Judon to have a dominant season this year. Y'all, last year he was on pace for 17 sacks. I mean, I told y'all, he literally recorded a sack in every game he played in. So if he played in all 17 games, he probably would have had 17 sacks. But in all seriousness, though, y'all, I mean, this was just a trade that Atlanta Falcons needed to make. I'm really surprised that they did not try to address edge rusher uh, in free agency because I, I doubt they were. But this more than makes up for y'all. I mean, you look at the Atlanta Falcons last season. They ranked 25th in quarterback pressure and quarterback pressure rate, y'all, 32.7. And then they were 21st in sacks, y'all, with 42. So now with Matt Junon, those numbers are going to go way up. And, y'all, I think Grady Jarrett's going to have a bounce back season. Um, Grady Jarrett played fine last year, but I want to see Grady Jarrett get back to, like, 2018, 2019, 2020 Grady Jarrett. And he should be able to do that now that he has a dominant edge rusher playing next to him, y'all. So now you look at the Atlanta Falcons. You like what they have defensively. Again, Grady Jarrett, Matt Judon, David Onyemata, Hayden Ellis, A.J. Terrell, Jesse Bates. And then let's see what they're going to have in their second-year corner, Clark Phillips, y'all. But this defense looks a whole lot better than what it did uh, yesterday. And so for the Atlanta Falcons, now I can firmly say, y'all, they are going to be a playoff team. Before this trade, I couldn't say that, but now I can say, y'all, they're going to be a playoff team. And you know Raheem Morris, y'all, has to be jumping for joy that his GM went out and got him a dominant edge rusher, a game-changing edge rusher. Because y'all, let's be honest, Raheem Morris, even though he's a great defensive coach, there's not enough plays, there's not enough scenes you can call up, y'all, for a guy that's not a good edge rusher, okay? 
just you cannot scheme players to be better than what they are. You just can't do that. But now that you have Matthew Judon, you can do that. Why? Because he is a great player, right? He is a dominant edge rusher. And y'all, I'm going to be intrigued to see what that young player, Arnold Evacati, does this season. Now that he's playing next uh, side, uh, now he's playing alongside, excuse me, y'all, a dominant edge rusher. Because last season, he had six and a half sacks. Now he's in there in year three. I really think they need Arnold Evacati, y'all, to finally show that he can be a very productive player in the NFL. So I want to see him get like nine or ten sacks this season. I know last year, again, because of them not having a dominant edge rusher, a guy that defenses really have to focus in on, it made his job a whole lot harder. But now it should make his job a whole lot easier. So, again, they need Arnold Evacati to come on strong because although Matthew Judon is still a great player, y'all, he is 32, but not only that, they're, they still don't have a long-term contract in place. And y'all, CBS Sports, Sports reporter Jonathan Jones uh, stated that uh, Matthew Judon is coming to the Falcons without a new contract in hand. So I guess they're just going to let him play this season out, see how he does, and then see if he fits their scheme, which I think he will. And then I'm pretty sure if he has a really great season, they'll give him a long-term deal. But y'all, for the Atlanta Falcons, they had to do this. You only gave up a 2025 third-round pick. Hey, forget that third-round pick. This team has not been to the playoffs, y'all, since 2017. Let me repeat, the Atlanta Falcons has not been to the playoffs since 2017. This team is in win-now mode. You do not sign Kirk Cousins to a four-year, $180 million deal if you're not in win-now mode, right? You don't do that. You don't do that. Their, their owner, y'all, Arthur Blank, the man is in his 80s, okay? He's ready to get back to the playoffs. He's ready to win big again. And now they should be able to do that. I don't think the Atlanta Falcons are a Super Bowl team, Super Bowl uh, contender, y'all. But I do think, again, I think I can really say they are going to be a playoff team now because now they have good pieces in the secondary, and now you finally have their edge rusher, y'all. That's going to make life easier for everybody around him, including some of the good players they already have on that D-line again. Brady Jared and David Onyemata, and then the young player, the Arnold, their young player, excuse me, Arnold Ebicady. So y'all, for the Atlanta Falcons, great trade. And for the New England Patriots, this is a great trade for them too because they weren't going to re-sign uh, Matt Judon, y'all. And it really doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Matt Judon, he's an older player. He wants to go to the team that has a chance to win, right? The New England Patriots, they're in rebuild mode. So it makes sense to unload, uh, uh, unload a veteran player, y'all. Get a nice pick in return from right the 2025 third round pick that the Patriots can use to continue to you know build and improve this roster. So I love this trade for both teams. But I was the Atlanta Falcons, y'all. They're the winners in here, right? Because they're the team that really needed a player like this to try to help them make this playoff push. And I think Matt Judon, y'all, he is going to really pay dividends for this team. And again, time will tell. Time will tell if they're going to give him a contract extension. But even if even if it's, this is only a one-year rental, y'all, I still love it. Y'all remember back in 2021 when the Los Angeles Rams at the trade deadline, they traded away a second-round pick to get Von Miller. And Von Miller came in, y'all. He helped to win the Super Bowl. Remember that Super Bowl against the Cincinnati Bengals? He had two sacks. And then what happened in free agency? He signed with the Buffalo Bills. So he was a rental for the Los Angeles Rams. But he was a great rental, right, because he helped them go to the Super Bowl. So if Matt Judon, y'all, if he's only here for this season, but he helps the Falcons go to uh, go to the playoffs, excuse me, and maybe even the Super Bowl if they somehow surprise me, I think Falcons fans and Falcons management, they would definitely be A-OK -okay with that. Sometimes, y'all, when you trade for a player, you're only trading for him knowing that he's probably only going to be here for a year or two, but you're trying to win right now. And because the Atlanta Falcons are trying to win right now, you make trades like this. Again, y'all, teams that are in win-now mode, you have to make win now trades. And I really love, again, really love their GM, Terry Fine, not doing something like this, y'all. It shows me he's really committed to winning. And it shows me that the Atlanta Falcons, as an organization, are committed to winning. So there I have it, man. That was another episode of the Zayman Live Sports Podcast. Remember, y'all, that is good message. So make sure you get your daily dose. Y'all know I'm going to end it, man. I love y'all. God bless. Peace.